They were with us last year and they're back. Maurice Green from Waka Waka and Maurice, welcome back. Thank you very much. You know, um, we, we're going to have to show just a little bit of the footage from last year because we want to make sure that we're going to kind of show you what are some of the, the catching up that we're going to do. So let's go to that cut right now. And with us today is Maurice Green of the Waka Waka Foundation. So this amazing light is something that you and your company has developed and you're making it available to the world. Yes, we are. And I have to make sure to turn it off. It's it has solar. four modes, yeah. Okay, so this is a solar light. It is. It's a very compact, sturdy, Here, sturdy light with a very small solar panel, but highly efficient because there's a chip inside, a Dutch chip, a <laughs> canal. So Which if you put it out in the sun for eight hours, you have 16 hours of very good light. It's above spec from the United Nations, so you can make your homework for 16 hours a day and then recharge it the next day because there's the sun again. Yeah. Well, well um, we discovered that um, one half billion people in the world um, are completely dependent on kerosene lighting. It is bad light. Mm. It is toxic fuel. So that was pretty cool last year, but you've really had a lot of uh, a lot of changes since then. What's happened in the last year? Well, last year we um, we started to produce uh, the Waka Waka light, which mm -hmm. was a light only. Mm -hmm. um, it sell it sell well um, all around the globe. But we went on to develop a Waka Waka power, which would, would not only have light from solar power, but also would have the, the possibility to charge your mobile phone or your radio or your iPad or your iPod. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, you were talking about that last year, and I didn't believe that you could have it, but right here it is. Yeah. So that's it. It's a light and a charger. So here you have the, the press button. Uh, if I push it once, here you will have the, black li the, the, the blue light. It shows the blue light, and it also shows um, the state of the battery. It goes out now because otherwise it's a waste. Here you have the indicator that it's bleeping if it's charging. If I push it again, then it also gives a light. You have four modes, one, two, two, three. And if I push it once for some longer time, you have the SOS beacon. You can hang it on the wall like this. Or you can mount it on top of a, a bottle, or you can just put it out on, and set it on the table. Here they have, you have the mini USB, and you can charge it if it's if it's empty. You want to fast charge it if you go out. You uh, charge it from from the grid. This solar panel is quite revolutionary. It's a 24 percentage efficiency, which is 33 percent more than the last one, since it has to charge now uh, electrical devices and still have enough power to to bring you light throughout mm. the night. So here we are at the Clinton Global Initiative, and so so much of what happens with the Clinton Global Initiative surrounds global development. Yeah. And I understand, and as you said, that this is getting into some really unusual places around the globe as well, right? Yeah. Actually, um, you hardly can mention any place on the globe where they haven't been um, brought to. I well, mean, I know they're in the United States because I've got one, Warren's got one, all of my friends in Seattle have them, and I think they're, they're actually selling on Amazon, right? The center of Amazon, uh, we have very good reviews for, for the light uh, and for the power as well. Mm -hmm. But we've been bringing them to um, well, almost all countries in, in Asia, uh, certainly in all countries in Africa. But some people, uh, for example, an Indian um, expedition took them even to Antarctica. Uh, another yeah, one took them to Greenland and they worked on all continents. All right, so again, what's the basic theory behind these? I mean, the, the, the power of the light, it seems to be so much more than my flashlight, for example. It's got a lot of light. It does give, give a lot of light. It's highly efficient, uh, both in terms of uh, the way in which sunlight is um, transformed into electricity and the power that it gives both from the light and to, the, to power your, your mobile phone. Um, the idea behind it, uh, I explained earlier, is to bring light and power to people that are off-grid. There's mm -hmm. about 1.5 billion people, that's 20% of the global population of the Earth. Mm -hmm. They're not connected to the grid, so they have to resort to using kerosene after, after, after sunset. 
which is a very dangerous toxic uh, fluid which costs them a lot of money and gives mm -hmm. them very poor light so uh, since there's uh, very democratically uh, distributed uh, light and power from the sun everywhere we set ourselves uh, the task to to provide people with light and power after darkness f uh, at an affordable price mm -hmm. uh, even for them how much well we always say it depends on who you are and where you are <laughs> because in the United States it's uh, sold for I think twice the price that it's being sold in Africa uh, which enables us to transfer that money mm -hmm. uh, to, lo to lower the price in Africa and Asia where people uh, otherwise wouldn't be able to afford it. Well, there's two parts to Waka Waka, isn't there? There's, there's your for-profit company and then there's your foundation that supports the, the work for the countries that aren't quite as wealthy. Excellent. I've yeah. got to ask you this. I was in Ghana recently uh, and I saw a lot of people and a lot of cell phones and a lot of people with cell phones off the grid. Is yeah. this for them? Yeah, certainly. Um, I think at the end of this year, 90% uh, of all Africans will have access to um, uh, phones, mm -hmm. mobile phones, but only 10% is connected to the grid, which leaves 80% with a cell, cell phone but without power. Mm -hmm. And they now have to go to uh, diesel-powered uh, places where they can charge a mobile phone for a lot of money. They have to wait until it's charged, so they lose a lot of time go there, sit there, and go back again, pay a lot of money to do that. Uh, and since they can now use uh, um, the solar power, they only pay once for the power, and uh, after a couple of months, it's sold off, and then for years, they have free power. For those who didn't see last year, where you, you had your debut, the, you basically, you just go and you, you put this up on top of a bottle, like a Coke yep. bottle or something like that, and then you sit it out in the sun for how long? Well, it depends on where you are. Um, the, the more south you go, the more intense and much sun you have. But uh, on New York, uh, on a shiny day, if you put it towards the sun, you have in eight hours the whole battery full, and then you can charge your mobile phone, even your, your, your uh, smartphone, and still have enough light f uh, for the whole night. Really? Well, the next day you have, of course, another day of sunlight. So you can study with it, of course, if you are a student. And the, yep. But that's a big deal, though, in, in parts of the world where uh, being able to study at night yep. is actually inhibiting kids from even getting to school. Well, the United Nations have, have done a, re uh, a research in, into South Sudan uh, where they saw that half the children uh, didn't pass their grades uh, because they couldn't study at night. And after having access to this, this kind of light, um, the, uh, the past grade went up to 100%. So they're very eager learning. Oh, wow. Yeah. So eight hours of charge gives you basically 16 hours of light. And oh, even or much more. Much oh, more. really? Yeah. Even more now? Yeah. Uh, it will give you 80 hours, 80 hours per day of light only. Since you have uh, also uh, the necessity to charge your mobile phone, mm -hmm. Part of the electricity goes to charge your mobile phone, but you still want to have light. So we, and that's why we have this highly efficient uh, solar panel, even much more efficient than the last one, because you have a dual function now. And I, and I understand that you're developing one that is going to be able to power fans and things like that. Yeah, yeah. This is already uh, able to do so. Oh, it already uh, powers fans. Yeah, but uh, for a sick time, of course, because it has a very um, uh, it's, it's, it's a very limited um, um, PV yeah. panel, of course, yeah. so you, it's, it's highly efficient, but of course there's, there's a, a, a limited amount sure. of electricity generated every day. You know, you were telling us some stories before we started um, the, this interview, and one of them was from Burkina Faso. What are some of the interesting ways that you've heard about people have used the Waka Waka light? Well, when I heard these stories, it was really moving um, to me because, for example, um, a couple of months ago I was giving a speech somewhere and there was a woman approaching me afterwards from the audience who says, I'm just back from Senegal and when I went in, into some uh, very remote villages and uh, you show me the Waka Waka and they had a Waka Waka down there. I mm. didn't even know that we were exporting them to Senegal at that time. But she says the story in the village was that the day, the very day after they came into the village, there was a woman uh, that had to give birth to a baby and she lived even outside the village on her own. 
and the, the delivery of the baby went wrong. She was bleeding to death. And then she rem remembered that there is also an alert signal, SOS signal on it, where you push a button for, for uh, two seconds. It gives a flashlight on the SOS uh, um, mode. Um, she put it, she just crawled out of her hut and she put it outside and somebody uh, noticed it and said something's wrong there. She went there and they saved both the woman and the baby. Yeah. And the same happened in, in Burkina Faso. Um, uh, actually, last week I got a, a message from someone that they took a, uh, a woman to a medical facility 10 miles outside the village where they were living. Um, they mounted her on top of a bicycle, just imagine. Hmm. Uh, they brought her to the facility, but it was pitch black dark, so you couldn't go anywhere on a bicycle without a light. They didn't have any other light, because, um, um, except for the Waka Waka, and they managed to get to the medical facility, and both the woman and the baby was, are living. So we know for sure that at least four lives have been saved by using the Waka Waka. Hmm. Now, Waka Waka means what? It means shine bright. Shine bright in Swahili. In Swahili. Oh, um, wow! Th those those are great stories, and you know, I, I suspect when you developed this, this that probably wasn't what you were thinking. But no, any anywhere that light can be used, yeah, then it can have an impact. Well, also in war situations, we've heard from refugees around Syria where they have to flee the uh, the horrors of the war. Mm -hmm. Um, you you want to know where your family is. You know what, where you can get food, uh, where you can go safely, etc. And um, these people have cell phones, but they're dead after one day. Mm. So you're gonna look oh, where is where is electricity to be found, and you know where, where the snipers are waiting for you. So it's very dangerous to charge your mobile phone in those situations where you, where you where you need it the most. Yeah. So if if people have light on the spot, where they can from the sun directly produce electricity and charge a mobile phone with it, it's saving lives. Wow. And your your co-founder was here just a few minutes ago before he had to go Can run off. Yeah. yeah, before he go to, had to go run off to an embassy, I think. And he was uh, was saying that actually you're working with the International Rescue Committee yep. uh, to actually get these units into Syria yep. uh, or at least to help the refugees out as much as possible. Yeah, Already we've been sending, I think, some 30,000 which means that on an average family of five, we have 150,000 people uh, that have light and power now, where formerly they just, well, they were out left in the dark and didn't have any connectivity. You know, uh, I'm gonna ask you this, but you probably won't tell me, what's the secret sauce? Why are these so special? Well, there have been uh, a couple of Dutch engineers that have been working, I think for 12 years now, mm -hmm. To, um, to convert solar power into electricity in a very efficient way. Yeah. So uh, we've been having this tested by the, the most um, knowledgeable uh, German institute which tests solar devices all over the globe. And they were coming back to us and they said, well, uh, we just don't uh, understand the measurements that, we, that we're getting. I mean, something must be wrong. Because it was so efficient, they couldn't believe it. I understand that President Clinton has one of these too. Yeah, he has. Yeah. I met him uh, three times over the last two years, uh, and he kept on consistently talking about Haiti, mm -hmm. and uh, because he was in charge of the rescue operation after the big earthquake uh, three years ago, and he saw the, the horrors of there. Um, even three years after, after the earthquake, there is over 350,000 people uh, still in tents without any facilities and said, you should go there and bring the lights there. So then we, um, we, um, when we had our, our, our Kickstarter starter, um, funding campaign mm -hmm. in order to produce this, because it's, it's cost a lot of money to, to make a product uh, from scratch like this, uh, we raised uh, $800,000. Um, we had 12,000 clients uh, buying it uh, beforehand, paying for it, and we promised to them that if they would buy Waka Waka Power, and pay for it beforehand, then we would send a Waka Waka light to uh, Haitian refugees, which are still out there. Hmm. And, and I just heard this very morning that the 12,000 lights that we have been uh, shipping to Port-au-Prince Harbor have been released from customs, so they now can be distributed 
to, uh, to, to the people in refugee camps. Well, that's fantastic. And interestingly enough, um, of course, uh, here in the New York area, we had a really very significant uh, natural disaster here. Yeah. And I know for a fact from talking with Warren, who uh, works with us here at Rainmakers, that uh, indeed the Waka Waka light was in use during Hurricane Sandy as well. Yeah, I know. But it was the same storm that hit Haiti and, uh, and New York. And, um, um, well, people... It was brought home to them that it can be very useful in disaster relief situations mm -hmm. to have an independent source of light and power. Well, I rode through Superstorm Sandy in one of the upper flood zones down by Coney Island. And, uh, you know, you have lots of time to get ready for a storm like this and everything. When the storm actually hits, and there's clouds over and the lights go out, it is black. There is nothing. We live in a neighborhood where all the wires are underground, so things don't go out. We were very, very lucky. We only lost light for a very brief time. But in those brief moments, having that light was really important. Um, and what's really nice about it is flashlights are in hand and you have to hold them. But this is designed more for, you know, you can put it on the table, you can put it on a, on a jar, on mm -hmm. a bottle, you can hang it, you can be sitting, it sits in my window fully charged, ready to go at all times. So it's, it's wonderful. We were lucky that we didn't lose power, but we did witness, essentially, we were on the fringe of a refugee camp. And the first two things to go were water and batteries. And they were bringing lots of water in, but there were no batteries. So to have something like the Waka Waka and not have to worry about the batteries was great. Oh yeah, because with the, with the batteries and the flashlights and the batteries go out and, you, and you, if you don't have any, you're stuck. Yeah. But with the Waka Waka light, you just charge it up by it's, the sun again. It's there. No, no more expendables. It was, you know, th it was three days before buses started running. More than a week before we started getting some of the subways back. So, and when you're sitting in the dark and it sounds like there's a train coming at you outside, um, a light like that can be very supportive. You know, last year it was just the light. Yeah. This year it's the light and power, and you have some additional power grids. Next year, do we have gonna have something cool coming from Waka Waka Light too? Yeah, sure. We're working on uh, several very useful devices, uh, both for uh, developing countries and for Western countries, because our philosophy is that we wanted to develop um, a design, highly efficient, high quality product that was even affordable for people at the bottom of the pyramid. And to our surprise, we didn't intentionally uh, market it in the United States or in Europe, but uh, at the moment half of our sales are in the United States and Europe, enabling us to lower the price for Africa and Asia. Mm, and I understand you've got a program that if you, if you buy one of these, uh, people are being encouraged to buy one for uh, another country as well, and then there's an additional break for it. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. We have a buy one, give one uh, procedure. If people buy it from us directly, if there's no money going to retail stores, for example, which they, of course, they have to earn money as well. Sure. If people buy it from us directly, then we can guarantee that when people buy one from us, we send one to a refugee camp or anywhere else where people are really in need of that. Even if we give it away, it's always free but not for nothing. Right. Because we don't believe in freebies. I mean, it's a wrong attitude. I mean, it's degrading for people and it's developing wrong attitude. So, right. for example, in Haiti where we're distributing 12,000 of these or the lights, uh, we ask people to, to uh, plant trees, to uh, clean up rubbish, to uh, repair roads, to help children educate, etc., etc. So people pay with their community service, with their sweat, with, they pay with sweat instead of money if they don't have it. Hmm. Fantastic. So we're going to light and power the world through Waka Waka. Maurice, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. Rainmaker believes we can change the world. One life, one heart, one soul, one mind at a time. Rainmaker believes we can change.